Now, what's to say, now, why did not, uh, are you going to get any amount of a reaction where the, um, because of resonance, you got a, an attack from an alpha carbon? Could you point out? I, I like, say, for instance, uh, mm -hmm. if uh, this shot down, mm -hmm. and then this shot up, right. and then you got, would you get an attack from here? Oh, that's really good thinking. That's uh, that's very good. Very few people would uh, think about that. So it's good that you're thinking about that resonance there. So uh, that, that's actually worth taking some time on because that'll turn out to be important. So what you were thinking about is, well, now one reason why some people might not think about that is because they might follow my advice and not draw the whole benzene ring. So then you can't think about resonance. But if you go back to drawing the whole benzene ring, it's clear that the negative charge here makes this oxygen nucleophilic. But we've seen that resonance means that surprising atoms can be nucleophilic. There's also a resonance structure where this char carbon has the negative charge. So it seems like this carbon should be nucleophilic. And if you could go further, there's also a resonance structure where this carbon has the negative charge. So it seems like that might be nucleophilic too. You're absolutely right. Uh, it's possible for this to be nucleophilic or this to be nucleophilic. And we basically just have to memorize for each set of reactions which is the atom that's going to be nucleophilic in that case. Um, Yeah, you really just have to memorize it. Okay. So it turns out in this case, we're you know, just going to memorize this, the oxygen. Uh, but you're right, there might be some other reaction where one of the carbons in the benzene ring acted like the nucleophile. That's a good point. This is actually called the Williamson ether synthesis. Williamson ether synthesis is when you deprotonate an alcohol so it can act like a nucleophile, and then it attacks an alpha halide set. Back in the earlier term, you probably saw how to do Williamson ether synthesis with normal alcohols, and we're just applying that now to benzene. It doesn't have to be an alkene. It could be no, an alkene. That's right. Okay. That's right. This might have simplified things a little bit, though, because we didn't have to worry about an E2 yeah. reaction happening here, because there's no room for it. But I, I think you could still get some Williams and Ethers synthesis even without the double bond here. As a technicality, I left something out because I thought it would be confusing. They had another reagent here. This actually stands for butyl. BU is for butyl. So this is a nitrogen with four butyl groups. So this is a chart butyl ammonium bromide salt. I really don't know what role this is playing in the reaction, um, but uh, it's not playing any important role. But just so you have to warn you, because you might see it on the exam, um, they included this as one of the reagents. Um, this is the solvent. It's not playing any role. I really don't know what this is doing. But uh, you should watch out that this seems to be a reagent that's sometimes used in the mix for these uh, Do you think it could, have, uh, it could have been to provide uh, steric hindrance so you didn't get an SN2 reaction right away? from the OH? Well, but it's a whole separate molecule, yeah. so I don't see how that could happen here. So yeah, I really don't know what's going on with that. Okay, we'll just watch out for that. It's really the sodium hydroxide that's playing the role here. It, it, and is it, I'm yeah. sorry, is that, uh, uh, it's just butyl nitrogen? Yeah. Huh. So what this is is four butyl groups mm -hmm. attached to a nitrogen. That would give it a positive charge, and here's the counter ion. So it's a quaternary ammonium salt. Earlier we learned that it wasn't hard to deprotonate phenols, and now we've learned something you can do with a deprotonated phenol, which is use it like a nucleophile to make an alkyl aryl ether. Let me show you a way of making alkyl aryl ethers that doesn't work. This method doesn't work. This method doesn't work. What's the exahalogen? Yeah. X for halogen. 
notice that we just kind of reversed things here. In this case, the benzene oxygen was the nucleophile, and the other chain was the electrophile. And now in this case, we've made the benzene into the electrophile, and we're using the other chain as the nucleophile. You might think you could do an SN2 like this. And the reason you can't do this is that SN2 only works for sp3 hybridized carbons. We, we didn't really spell that out in an earlier term, but, but SN2 only applies to sp3 tetrahedral carbons. So this cannot be a carbon that does a SN2 because it's sp2 hybridized. So let's cross this out. This is something you might try that doesn't work. Okay. Instead, we have to put the leaving group over here and use this oxygen as the nucleophile. Let's go through the mechanism and predict the product here. This should be basically similar. Familiar to have to work with the uh, reacting moment. I've never seen that before, so I don't know. Wait, which one is the one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's see if we can take a guess. Um, what's one of the, the reactive atoms that we're dealing with here? I don't know. Well, just in the mix anywhere. Oh, with the negative oxygen. Okay. Now, even if we don't know the whole answer to a problem, maybe we know half of it. Should this be at a head or a tail of an arrow? Be a tail. Okay, so even if we don't know everything that we're going to do, we should at least uh, write in what we know. Well, you can see we're halfway done. We have to figure out an atom that might be reasonable to put at the head. Take a guess. Is there any atom over here that might be reasonable to put at the head of an arrow? Carbons? Yeah, that's right. It would be reasonable to put the carbon at the head. Any reason for that? <laughs> um, well, just because they're the least of the electronegative atoms in that molecule. Okay. So it seemed like they might have a little bit, if they're grouped with that many electronegatives, it seemed like they at least have a delta positive. Okay, that was the key. So the key thing is we have to be able to use, um, you mentioned that you hadn't seen this particular reagent before, but we have to be able to use our general principles to predict what's going to happen with unfamiliar reagents. How do we find electrophiles? Well, we know that carbons with delta positive charges tend to be electrophiles. Carbons with delta positive charges tend to be electrophiles. So even though we've never seen this before, we can take a guess that this might be an electrophile. So let's see, we have the negative attacking this carbon. And then we have to break this bond. Well, let's try drawing what the products would be from that step.
that's fine. Notice that we just found another way to make an alkyl aryl ether. It's not really another way, it's very similar to what we saw before. It's just that we've used a different leaving group. And, and just like the previous example, we deprotonated the phenol to make it a better nucleophile. And then we attacked an alpha carbon with a good leaving group.